Today, patuloy po natin pinag-uusapan itong series natin, Helping Everyone Live Productively or yung HELP series, which is uh, really the cornerstone ng talagang uh, mission statement ng RLCC, which is to help people experience real life in Christ together with others. And this involves yung process na tinatawag na discipleship, you know, or teaching people, you know, how to really live productively in the Lord, to bear fruit for Christ. And um, so we are now in session two of this uh, new series. And the title of our conversation this morning is uh, Making Sure Everyone Has the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, of course, is uh, really the key, you know. Um, the gift of the Holy Spirit is what makes all the difference of buhay natin in terms of... Uh, our uh, experience of uh, true salvation and so i would say that uh, up front no uh, bago pa tayo magpatuloy i want to say to everyone na kailangan po natin ng holy spirit everyone needs the holy spirit you know to experience true salvation so uh when I say everyone, of course, I, I don't just mean, of course, lahat ng tao dyan sa labas. But really, I'm referring dun sa mga tao na nasa loob or kabilang na sa ating mga small groups or gawain natin. We really need to make sure that people have received the Holy Spirit kasi all efforts na ating gagawin to try to disciple them would really come to nothing unless they have the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. Uh, to enable them to really uh, experience yung salvation ng Panginoon. So, uh, yesterday we started with the idea na kailangan we have to make sure na naiintindihan ng mga tao yung gospel and that they have put their faith in Jesus and that they have committed or surrendered their lives to Him no, by faith. And now, itong bagay na to, which is uh, the confirmation you know, from from the side of God, ika nga, that affirms and confirms no yung decision na yun, uh, is of course no other than the gift of the holy spirit which is very very important na ma make sure natin ma determine natin meron ba silang holy spirit because without the holy spirit kahit anong ituro natin kahit anong gawin natin of course hindi nila uh ma-receive yan or may apply uh you know people cannot uh really Obey the Lord except through the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is really essential. At uh, unfortunately, misan din natin ito nabibigyan ng pansin o din natin na, na verify ito. Kaya sometimes, you know, it's very frustrating. Uh, misan merong mga tao sa, sa, sa loob ng small group natin o sa church na parang iba yung kanilang nagiging choices sa buhay or parang hindi nila na receive yung mga the words of God na tinuturo natin so sometimes it's just very frustrating pero if we can just find out you know and discover have they received the holy spirit then you know this is the the, the most important thing and make sure na they have received the holy spirit so making sure everyone has the holy spirit is an important topic and that's what we are going to talk about today ang passage po natin is Acts 19 uh, verses 1 to 7. Okay, Acts 19, 1 to 7. And so, basahin po natin to. Let us pray pagkatapos so that we can meditate on what God is saying to us. Okay, so Acts 19, 1 to 7. Ganito po ang sinasabi. While Apollos was at Corinth, uh, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
And in verse 6 says, When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So purihin ang ating Panginoon. This is God's word from the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 1 to 7. Let us all pray. Manalangin po tayo. Lord, maraming salamat sa iyo, Panginoon, for your word. Help us, Panginoon, na maging basis ng aming mga paniniwala, ng aming mga buhay, is what you say in your word. Renew our minds, Panginoon. If there is anything na, na misunderstand namin o hindi namin alam, help us to be open, to receive your word, to understand what you are saying, and to follow after your will, Lord God, for our lives. So, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you, Panginoon. And we just pray, O God, that you would uh, speak to us this morning through your word para maunawaan namin to. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, gaya na sinabi ko kahapon, you know, it's possible minsan for some people na to identify themselves as Christians, you know, to be part of the church. Kung bawa, naimbitahan sila, nadala sila ng kanilang asawa or mga anak or kapatid o pinsan, kaibigan, whoever. And uh, sometimes because uh, na-enjoy nila yung na-experience sila doon, they begin to attend regularly. Uh, sometimes they might even join a small group, no? In other words, they can just be part, no? Magiging kabilang sila ng buong gawain. And uh, of course, it's such a wonderful thing to see. And uh, for those of us na maaring related tayo sa ganung mga tao, in other words, kung kaibigan natin, kamag-anak, or somebody na close sa atin, ay nakita natin dumadalo sa church, pumunta. Siyempre, we are so, uh, you know, encouraged by that, no? But then sometimes, minsan, na-assume na lang natin and we don't really take the time to make sure na nasa tamang foundation yung tao, no? Uh, sometimes we invite a person to a Bible study and they just go and attend. But we never really take the time to make sure na naintindihan nila yung gospel. Now, for sure, some people, uh, maybe hindi pa sila ready. Uh, and of course, we need to ask, you know, would you like to know more about the salvation that comes through faith in Jesus? Halimbawa, you know, uh, simply just, just to challenge them, o kaya sila mismo magpapahiwatig sa pamagitan ng kanilang pagtatanong, no? When they're asking questions, it would indicate na they're interested to really take seriously itong uh, pinag-uusapan nating salvation in Christ. And those are good indicators na dapat i-set aside natin o set apart natin yung tao na yun or several people for a more intensive um, conversation about the gospel. Uh, I'm saying this lalong-lalo sa mga dumadalo ngayon sa mga share groups, kanyan, yung mga grupo natin na maybe you, they have not really formally talaga uh, indicated yung decision nila to follow Christ. So we need to set apart yung time to talk with them. Maring not in the same group, not in the same share group, but maybe on uh, something on the side, no? Na imimit natin sila to talk about the gospel. Or maybe personally. Minsan personal yan. Minsan we have to really talk with a person one-on-one -on -one para maintindihan niya yung gospel. So like I said, you know, very important yan. We cannot simply assume na just because um, dumadalo yung tao, at nakikisa siya doon sa mga gawain, that he or she is already a Christian, no? So, we make sure, we make time. We try to explain the gospel doon sa tao na yun. Uh, we ask the Lord, of course, for the right timing. We ask God for guidance kung kailan yun gagawin because some people may not be ready for it. And so, anyway, kung sakaling dumating yung time na magdi-decide na sila, and they follow, and they would like to follow the Lord Jesus. So usually we baptize them, you know, in water through immersion, at uh, in order for them to publicly declare yung decision nila to become followers of Christ. Now, there is something, uh, you know, that would happen when a person really commits himself to follow Christ, because whenever that happens, God gives, you no, know, the Holy Spirit to that person bilang confirmation, bilang uh, 
I can uh, indication that that person is now starting to experience na yung the saving grace of God. In other words, yung salvation niya ngayon would become apparent. And uh, so the gift of the Holy Spirit is that confirmation that basically seals, no? Uh, nagseselyo dun sa buong karanasan ng tao na yun that really shows that he, no? Or she, no? Is now uh, saved and is being saved and it's going to be saved, you know? Sa buhay niya. So napakahalaga nung uh, gift na yun ng Holy Spirit. So we need to understand this. So, tingnan natin yung passage na ating binasa kanina. Sabi nga nung, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. So, si Apostle Paul to, na dating Saul, no? Now, if you remember, we talked about him. Ang pangalan niya dati was Saul. Ngayon, nag-convert siya ng pangalan, Paul. So, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There, he found some disciples. Now, the word disciples could simply mean students or learners. Now, in the context of the book of Acts, usually they refer to Christians or followers of Christ. But it can also be a general term to refer to any kind of person uh, who is a student or a learner. No, So there he found some disciples and asked them, um, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? In other words, itong mga tao na to, most likely, you know, are identified as uh, Christians pero may kulang sa kanilang karanasan. No? Uh, Paul knew that they are believers, in other words. So, in other, so sa madaling salita, itong disciples na to are not just simply parang uh, generic na mga pupils, but really they are uh, supposedly identifying themselves among the believers, among those who are called Christians, no? As we have seen sa, you know, sa Acts chapter 11 kahapon. Now, sabi nga niyan, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Uh, they answered, no, we have not even heard there is, that there is a Holy Spirit. Now, please understand it all. Very important, of course. Um, people need to know and to understand that there is a uh, uh, such a thing as the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. He is a person, the person or the third person of the Trinity. No, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, He is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And uh, He, of course, is the one promised by the Lord Jesus who would come. And uh, He would uh, reside in people, no? To confirm yung saving grace ng Panginoon sa buhay ng bawat isa. And so, Paul was asking kung na-receive nila yung Holy Spirit. No? And sabi nila, hindi pa. And in fact, sabi nila, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So, mahalaga rin ay paliwanag sa mga tao no? in tungkol sa Holy Spirit. And why uh, it is important that they receive this gift no? in their lives. Kasi hindi makukompleto at hindi maumpisahan talaga yung... <coughs> yung salvation na nais ng Panginoon ni parana sa kanila without the Holy Spirit. So some teaching is involved, some clarification and some explanation is necessary para yung mga tao maunawa nila that they need the Holy Spirit. But there are three things na ano natin dito, mabibigyan natin ng observation dito. No? First of all, uh, the Holy Spirit is a, is a gift, no? That's why sabi ni Paul, did you receive? You know? So in other words, it's a gift. It's not something that you pay for. You know? It's not something na pinagtatrabawahan mo. It's, there's no, uh, parang hindi ka yung nag effort para marang mangyari yan. It's a gift. Okay? And uh, it's clear throughout the scriptures na God gives this gift, no? Uh, whomever, whenever that he he chooses to. Hindi ito something na pwede natin i-manipulate. Hindi dahil you are a certain kind of person, automatically uh, mararanasan mo yung Holy Spirit. One of the things na uh, misan maririnig ninyo o siguro ma-encounter niyo mga pagtuturo is the moment na a person puts his faith in Jesus, automatically he will receive the Holy Spirit. But that is putting the you know no the Holy Spirit as some kind of parang uh, 
uh, it kind of something that we are able to control. You know, if I receive the Christ, you know, then I will receive the Holy Spirit. The fact na tinatanong ni Paul ito, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed, indicates that this is not something in their control. This is God's prerogative. In other words, si Lord ang nagbibigay nito. Now, yung salitang when, no, when you believed, can also be translated after you believed. Now, in the original language, uh, Griego, no, yung salitang when uh, can either mean parang at that time naniniwala sila or it could also be translated pagkatapos nilang maniwala, manampalataya. The timing is not really that crucial, you know, um, because uh, what is important is the source, you know. And the experience itself. In other words, uh, galing ito sa Panginoon. It's a gift. That's the first thing na kailangan natin maunawaan. Uh, it does not depend on our own efforts. Hindi, na, hindi nakabase yan sa kahit nag-pray ka to receive Christ. It's a gift. In other words, God gives uh, the Holy Spirit. At siya yung nakakaalam ng puso ng mga tao. No? Uh, kapag sila ay talagang tunay na tumatalikod sa kasalanan when they are turning to the Lord and surrendering their lives only God knows the the true contents of a need, of a person's heart kaya when he gives the gift of the holy spirit it is to confirm and affirm no yung decision na yun, which may be invisible no uh, sa po, sa tingin ng mga tao in other words uh, i may not know what is truly in a person's heart maybe siguro pag nagsasalita siya nagpe-pray siya I might think na he is really repenting, pero only God knows for sure if that person is turning to the Lord and in repentance and faith. Kaya nga, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is something that God gives according to His sovereignty. You know? uh, so, hindi ito nakasalalay sa formula o sa ritual. Uh, even yung praying, you know, for, uh, for the Holy Spirit, no, uh, to come upon people, you know, it's it's really just by faith. We don't control that. I have prayed for people to receive the Holy Spirit, and it seems uh, nothing happened because God only God knows the person's heart. Okay, uh, sometimes a person is not really repenting, not really turning away from their sins to follow Jesus. Meron silang mga doubts o double-mindedness. Minsan, nagko-conform lang sila siguro doon sa nangyayari sa paligid nila. But they are not really turning to the Lord you know, with all their hearts. So, nagtataka sila bakit you know, other people may experience the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, while sila mismo parang nothing happens. Because here's the truth na kailangan maunawaan natin from this passage. That the Holy Spirit is something that we receive it's a gift okay we can actually we may receive it at the time that we actually are believing you know when you believe sabi nga ni Paul or maybe immediately afterwards the timing is not something na control natin we don't we don't go through some ritual and then automatically guaranteed marie receive natin yung Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is a gift okay given by God and only he would know, you know, to whom he will give it, or rather give him, not it. Um, only God knows the person's heart. And so therefore, when he gives the Holy Spirit, he gives it uh, as he wills. No, uh, Again, I'm sorry if I'm using the pronoun it. In this, it because the Holy Spirit is a person. So... Um, Yung, if ever I use the word eat, I'm referring to the experience, okay? So, when God gives, He gives according to His sovereign will, according to His uh, wisdom, you no, know, and uh, His prerogative. We don't control that. We don't know when that would happen. We don't know uh, how it would happen, all right? We simply receive. And we'll talk about yung uh, mga... Sabi natin mga, how do we know? You know, we'll answer that question tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, how do we know that we have received the Holy Spirit? Okay? Ano yung mga evidences that we have the Holy Spirit? We'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. Pero for now, gusto ko lang i-highlight yun na the Holy Spirit um, is a gift. Okay? Let's clarify that, no? 
It's a gift na binibigay ng Panginoon according to His sovereignty. Walang pwede mag-control niyan. Walang magic diyan. Nobody can, can uh, give the Holy Spirit to anyone except the Lord. Okay? So that is a gift. Amen? Now, also, another thing na ma-observe natin dito is a person who receives that gift knows. Malalaman niya if he or she has received this gift. Kaya nga nagtanong si Paul, eh, di ba? Uh, did you receive the Holy Spirit, you know, when you believed? In other words, kung di nila alam yun, how can Paul ask that question, you know? And that's why yung sagot nila is quite honest. Sabi nila, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. In other words, hindi nila alam at hindi they cannot answer. And this is so important. If you ask a person, you know, have you received the Holy Spirit? He or she would know, no, uh, that he has received the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to tell the person, you know, you have received the Holy Spirit. Tapos sasabihin niya, wala naman ako nararanasan o nararamdaman. And then sasabihin mo sa kanya, hindi, by faith, meron kang Holy Spirit. This is contrary to scripture. You know, uh, we, we cannot convince a person that he has the Holy Spirit or that she has the Holy Spirit. Kung siya mismo di niya alam. In other words, uh, he or she would know that he or she has received this gift. And we'll talk more about yung mga evidences yan, no? Again, tomorrow yan. Pero we'll, we'll not talk about it at this point. Pero gusto ko lang malaman natin na the person who receives the Holy Spirit knows, okay, that he or she has received that gift. It is not something na kailangan sabihin mo sa kanya or parang ipipilit mo sa kanya. Okay? So these are very important teachings, no, in the Word of God. First of all, gusto ko i-clarify na it's a gift. Okay? So there's, therefore, there's nothing that we can do to make that gift come. Okay? Uh, walang music, walang parang anything na on our part. It's a gift. Okay? So very important. We simply just receive it the moment God gives it. Okay? Now, secondly, we would know if we have received the Holy Spirit or not. In other words, so, you know, no one needs to be told na, you know, well, you have the Holy Spirit. If he or she cannot really say for sure, suppose on you that he has received the Holy Spirit, then there's no point in us in telling the person na, alam mo, meron ka ng Holy Spirit eh. Now, he or she would know this. Okay? Kaya nga, you can ask a person, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Pag sinabi niya, well, you know, hindi uh, ko alam eh. <laughs> then most likely he or she has not received the Holy Spirit. You may, of course, further, uh, you know, give that person some kind of idea, and maybe that might help, no? Pero definitely, alam niya ito. And, we, and I will talk about it, yung internal evidence, which is really more uh, important, no? And then, of course, there are uh, external evidences as well, but usually over time, yun, no? But what I'm saying is that um, there will be no doubt so, puso ng isang tao that he or she has received the Holy Spirit. If he or she has indeed received the Holy Spirit. Hindi mo siya kinakailangan kumbinsihin doon. Okay? Because he or she would know in his heart and in his spirit that, he, that something has uh, happened sa buhay niya that cannot be explained. No? Walang uh, preceding cause. You know? In other words, hindi niya sinaykap yung sarili niya. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hindi niya inimbento yung experience. In other words, hindi yung parang namanipula lang yung emotion niya kaya siya nagkaroon ng ganong experience. Hindi. It, it's, it's, a, it's a gift that is given to people without any preceding cause. In other words, walang, walang reason para masabi mo, ah, siguro kaya siya naiyak kasi yung tugtog eh, very you know, emotional. Or maybe yung preaching ng pastor parang nakaka-move. No, walang preceding cause. There's no nothing that would connect it. It's just a gift that happens to you because God gives you that gift and you know it. You know it in your heart. So, yung sagot nila na no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit is of course quite telling. It means na talagang ignorant sila, hindi nila alam. So, Paul asked, 
Then what baptism did you receive? Now notice nyo to, when he asked this question, then what baptism did you receive? He's basically referring to an experience. Okay? Kasi alam nila yun eh, may experience sila eh. So tinatanong sila ni Paul, ano yung naranasan nyo? Ano yung experience yung baptism? O sabi nila, John's baptism. So in other words, yung baptism through water. Yun, experience nila yun. They can verify it. They can actually uh, answer Paul quite, you know, confidently. John's baptism, sabi nila. And so, sabi sa verse 4, Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Okay, so in other words, yung experience na yun ay palatandaan that they are repenting. Na sila ay nagsisisi na. That's why very important ang water baptism sa mga tao who wants to follow Christ. Yun yung way of publicly declaring na sila ay nagre-repent. Now, very important ito because uh, as you well know, gaya ng sinabi ko earlier, sa, sa Pilipinas, for example, ang tradisyon ng mga tao, binabaptize yung mga bata. Of course, yung mga bata kaya natrepent. Hindi naman nila alam kung ano yung repentance at bakit sila magre-repent. Hindi man nila alam yung gospel. So, ang baptism ay binibigay lang sa mga tao na kakaunawa ng gospel. And only for those who actually believe. So, we don't baptize children. We baptize those na may isip na, na pwede natin ipaliwanag yung gospel sa kanila, and that they can decide on their own to repent, to turn away from their sins, and to surrender their life to Jesus. So, yun ang binababtize natin. Pero nevertheless, dito sa pinag-uusapan natin, when Paul was asking them about itong Holy Spirit, he was relating it to an experience that they themselves can verify. Kasi sabi ni Paul, uh, then what baptism did you receive? So sabi nila, John's baptism. So sabi ni Paul, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. No? So he told the people you know, to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. So in other words, Merong kulang doon sa proseso na kanilang naranasan. They have become disciples pero not completely understanding kung ano ba yung dapat na mangyari sa buhay nila. So basically sabi ni Paul, pina, parang uh, kinlarify niya na yung ministry ni John the Baptist, although he talked about repentance in view of the coming of the kingdom of God, but he also pointed to Jesus as the one who is going to bring about God's kingdom you know, in the lives of people. So, si ang point ng ministry ni John the Baptist is to really lead people to Jesus. So, yung karanasan itong mga disciple na ito, taga Ephesus, hindi kompleto. They have yet to really surrender their lives to Jesus and to believe in Him. And so, nung nangyari na yun, assuming na on verse 5, sabi, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So that was the time that they completed the process, that they surrendered their lives to Jesus and believed in Him as their Messiah, as the Lord and Savior of their lives. So in verse 6, sabi ganyan, When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. Now, notice nyo yung language na yun. The Holy Spirit came on them. In other words, this is not something na, no, na nanggaling kay Paul or, you know, parang meron siyang magic hands, no? No, he, he prayed for them. Pero it was God who gave the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit came upon them. Very important ito. That the Holy Spirit is really the, you know, God's very presence coming into the life of a person. And he or she would then on experience the presence of God sa buhay niya. And he or she would know this. Malalaman niya ito. Now, there's a third thing na pwede natin masabi sa karanasan ng mga taga-Ephesus na ito. And that is... <coughs> It is possible na magkaroon ng supernatural or sabihin natin na extraordinary manifestation, katulad ng speaking in tongues. Sabi ko nito, when, when Paul placed his hands over, uh, on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. 
which means na you know nagkaroon ng supernatural na parang manifestation of that experience na nakita ng mga tao. Now I say I say uh, oh, I said kanina na it, there could be supernatural manifestations kasi you know in scripture hindi naman siya consistent na sa lahat ng pagkakatao merong supernatural manifestation. For example, even in the you know the first part of the book of Acts nung uh, na feel ng Holy Spirit yung mga disciples, yung mga first uh, uh, believers, no? They spoke in tongues. But then later on, sa chapter 2, mabasa natin na 3,000 were added to their number that day. Pero we are not told whether they spoke in tongues. We are simply told that they were baptized. So of course, hindi tayo pwede mag-argue based on, uh, you know, ng wala doon. But neither can we affirm, no? Kasi hindi naman sinabi that they were they spoke in tongues. So it's not consistent throughout the scriptures na every time na nafe-feel ng Holy Spirit ang isang tao, that he or she would actually speak in tongues or even prophesy. Now that could happen, and if, the, if it does happen, of course, that's a blessing. Pero kasi the reason why I don't want to you know make such a big emphasis on that na kailangan merong ganun, it's because sometimes people can fake that, no? Ang real evidence ng gift of the Holy Spirit ay hindi pwedeng i-fake, no? Kasi it's more internal in nature. And it's based on character eventually, over time. Pero yung speaking in tongues can be, you know, uh, mimicked, you know? It can be parang, misan pwede magpanggap ang isang tao that he is actually speaking in tongues. So that can be quite deceiving. And especially kung later on makikita mo yung character niya that has, has not been transformed, you know, and uh, or is not transforming. Kaya nga, we'll talk more about the true evidences of the gift of the Holy Spirit, no, as we talk about this. So, stand by lang kayo. I'm sure you have some questions like, you know, paano malalama kung nasa, yung nasa tao na yung Holy Spirit? We'll talk about that tomorrow and Thursday and maybe until Friday. Pero at this point, I want us to understand three things. Una, it's a gift. Okay? Na kailangan ma-receive ng isang tao if he, if he or she really wants to experience salvation. It's a gift. Pangalawa, you know, you would know when you have received that gift. Nobody needs to tell you no, that you have that gift. You would know for yourself that you have that gift. And then pangatlo, there could be some, you know, supernatural manifestation that uh, proves that yung gift na yun has come upon you. Uh, not necessarily so in all situations, but there could be. You can actually speak in tongues, or for some reason, they just cry, you know, tears of joy. There could be some manifestation that can be seen by people around you. That's really uh, quite uh, no, possible and common. Pero not all the time. In other words, kung... Just because hindi ka nag-speaking tongues, that's not necessarily mean hindi mo na-receive yung Holy Spirit. Amen? And um, there are other more reliable evidences that you have received the Holy Spirit. So, I hope and pray na naiintindihan po natin to that everyone needs the Holy Spirit to experience true salvation. And we should do our best to make sure to find out whether yung kasamahan natin sa small group have already received the Holy Spirit. Now, remember, remember they, there's, there's no way that they can receive the Holy Spirit unless first they believe in the gospel. So, yun yung priority doon. They must hear the gospel and they must believe. So, importante yung faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior before we even talk about the Holy Spirit. Okay? And maybe that's part of what we also need to understand. It's a gift, but it's also based on faith. The faith of the person on Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And also the person would know if he or she has received the Holy Spirit. Amen? And uh, last but not the least, of course, maaaring magkaroon ng supernatural manifestation like speaking in tongues or prophecy, but not necessarily so in all situations. So tayong lahat po ay manalangin. Uh, I hope that uh, this has helped you to understand very important po, without the gift of the Holy Spirit, really we cannot experience yung salvation na nais ng Panginoon iparana sa atin. So tayong lahat po ay uh, yumuko at uh, let's all pray. 
Thank you Lord sa biyaya mo Panginoon. Salamat po na by your grace and mercy you have helped us to understand that truly we need the Holy Spirit and uh, it's based on the, the, the faith that we uh, exercise toward the gospel, toward Jesus, our Savior and Lord. And uh, salamat po Lord and we can know for sure sa puso namin if we have received the Holy Spirit or not. Nobody needs to tell us so. Nobody needs to prove that to us. And thank you, Lord. Na there are times that there could be supernatural manifestations also that others can see. Uh, salamat po, Panginoon, for the Holy Spirit through whom we can experience true salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I also pray, Lord, sa mga lahat ng mga small group leaders, mga facilitators and coordinators ng mga small group, mga share groups, mga life groups. I pray that they would take the time, together with the core teams, they would take the time to verify kung ang mga membro ba nila ay nakaunawa na ng gospel at nakareceive na ng Holy Spirit as a gift. So Lord, please uh, help each uh, leadership team to do this among their members. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.